Yes, the lowly rototom, an odd little instrument, but super innovative. If you've never seen one of these before, you just turn it and it brings up that tension. Invented in the 70s, used by a myriad of famous drummers on some iconic drum, drum parts, some songs, and some like crazy looking drum kits. These were all but abolished in the 90s. Don't know what happened to them, but they're back, baby. And as usual here at Drumio, we're gonna take this all the way to the fence and maybe go through the fence. We built an entire drum kit out of these weird looking little drums, the Rototoms. Today, it's all about the Rototoms. We're gonna talk about the history, the cool stuff they've done, and what they might do in the future. Today on the drum department, which starts right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what have we done here? What have we done? So what we have here, Brandon is sitting behind a full complement of Rototoms. Now, they're not normally played as a complete drum set. Quite often you see these as the toms, but we've taken the liberty here and flipped over uh, the big old 18 inch Rototom, made a bass drum out of it. And of course, uh, which is also a laptop stand, we've turned yeah. the 14 inch into a little snare drum for today. Cause we thought if we're gonna do Rototoms, let's do only Rototoms. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen a full Rototom kit. I was just going <laughs> to say, pretty wild. <laughs> we're starting to see these more and more. Our David R just did a video on all Rototoms. Uh, they're making a resurgence. But before mm. we get into that, uh, what has been your experience, everybody here with Rototoms? I bet you everybody here has at least played them once. So, yeah. uh, Brandon, what was your first time with, with Rototoms? I think the first drummer I saw playing them, and this will, uh, will age me, but mm. Taylor Hawkins had oh, wow. two on the right side mm. of his kit, like, 15 and 16 yeah. inch rototoms. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think from there I saw Roger Taylor having a few of them on the side. True that. Yeah. Dave? I've never used them in an actual application, but Jared had an old set that he would mm -hmm. have by his kit. Um, and then I go to this jam every Wednesday and there's two rototoms on there. Nice. Um, so I've only kind of just played around with them. But yeah, they're definitely cool drums, that's for sure. For me, yeah. it was concert band percussion in high school. Ah. Nice. Like anytime we had to do it, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I took care of all the instruments there. Like I take care of all the instruments here. And uh, yeah, I loved I loved playing around with the rototoms. They're a lot of fun. But this is an abomination. It is. Oh, yeah, it absolutely. This, this is. is an abomination. Most of you here. out there have probably seen a set of six, eight, and ten, which is these three up front yeah. here, mounted on a rail, and they're sold as a set. So many of us would buy those to make our instant drum kits. Instead of a five piece, we suddenly have eight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just buying three drums for the price of probably half a drum. If you can't afford concert toms, you I guess this was the solution. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It was the Could... easiest way to become uh, Neil Peart. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's hear these things. No, 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 no. no. Come on, no, man. We're gonna he... No, no. Come no, on. No, People no, are like, no. let's hear the drums. <laughs> I don't want to hear stories. <laughs> All right. We can't even give them one. Okay, fine. Fine. I'll relent this just, one just time. Once. We're not going to give away the snare or the bass drum yet. Let's okay. Do, let's do the the eight, which I can turn. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I can appreciate that everybody wants to hear them. <laughs> there is I, I, the reason I wanted I was hedging that is because I did some research on these things. I didn't know this. They're half Canadian. Are they really? There's two people that, that designed them. A gentleman named Al Payson and Michael Colgrass, who's actually Canadian, designed the Rototoms. Uh, Remo eventually licensed them, and these are what we would consider bona fide uh, Rototoms. The patent has since expired, and you can buy CB percussion ones, yeah. granite percussion ones, uh, Dave's drums percussion ones, I'm sure. Dave mm -hmm. has his own line of Rototoms coming out soon. AI Toms. AI Toms, Toms. yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Rototoms are part of our heritage. They really are. Nice. And they were designed basically as like a tunable, obviously a tunable drum, single-headed, so it could sometimes approximate the sound of a timpani I, I thought that's or concert kind of, tom. Yeah. Yeah, where it came from. So yeah. the very first example that I could find of Rototoms in use, there's a piece written by a man named Tippett. It's a concert piece for orchestra by a piece called The Rose Lake. And it is written, part of the percussion section uses 36 rototoms. Jeez. Not 35, 36. Not 37, 36, all tuned chromatically. Like three <laughs> octaves of rototom. Two percussionists <laughs> playing it. So uh, I want you all just to keep it down for a second. We're going to listen to some audio. This is an excerpt from The Rose Lake. You'll hear all the rototoms in action. Check this out. Ooh. So someone's spinning. Nope, 
there's 36 of them, so they don't have to do that. Yeah. Imagine wow. a rototom piano in three octaves. Well, you're spending you're spending way too much money. You just need one, and then someone just has to spend <laughs> it. Uh, Why would you get 36? Because you, you can't have rototom harmony. No, well, that's you true. So you need one. two. You need at least. You can't two. have rototom <laughs> or thirty six. <laughs> or thirty six. I guess they basically had it set up where they had two sets of chromatic sets, and you can see the two percussionists kind of running between the two sets. It's actually quite interesting. Mm. There's very little footage of it, so I couldn't show a clip. That okay. was the problem. Okay. Uh, but of course, a lot of the like prog leaning drummers back in the seventies saw this and went, "Hey, this is pretty cool. Right. How do I add this to my drum kit?" Yeah. Right? I, I'm still thinking on thirty six rototoms. <laughs> I want to see the actual like sheet music. Is it like marimba music yeah, where sometimes there's footsteps written into it where you have to step left foot behind right foot? It's all pitched. Yeah. And they're set up like a keyboard. So right. you're looking at C to C and then you got the, yeah. the, the, the... But in the, order to get from the high octave down to the low octave, is there a footstep pattern? Like yes. right foot over left yeah, foot or you left think, like one yeah. of those? It is, it's about 25 feet long, right. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's wild. Welcome, everyone, who's just catching us. We were a little bit of a hiccup there, but hello, everybody. Welcome to YouTube. We've got this abomination of a Rototom kit here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Welcome. Whoa. All right, so Kyle, you're giving us the history of Rototoms. Let me catch them up quickly with bullet points. Yes. Designed by two people, one of them Canadian. We just listened to an excerpt of a classical piece using 36 Rototoms. And only us have heard that. It didn't really, you know, get a lot of steam, I guess. Eh? <laughs> We're bringing it back. We're bringing it yeah. back. It was not a, yeah, it was certainly not a banger, but even by uh, orchestra standards, yeah. for didn't sure. Didn't make the yeah. Billboard charts. No, no. <laughs> it's no. like the new Blink album. <laughs> and then this 36 Rototom. It was competing. Second, it uh, was competing. Second place. But Poor time to release. Yeah. <laughs> let's get into the meat of this whole thing. Though. Okay. So we have the classical example, but then all these drummers in the 70s are like, these are really cool. I need to get me some of these in my drum set. So we've got a clip here. This is going to be a clip of Bill Bruford playing with Earthworks. You'll see that his kit is augmented with Rototoms. He actually has them as his toms. And also in this clip is probably the most famous Rototom audio part you'll ever hear. So check this out. Oh. So yeah. two very different applications. Yeah. But that part in time, so that's from time. The, the, I had, the I had no piece. idea he played that live on Rototoms. Exactly. Because I think it was all just samples and no. in, in the uh, in the original. That's yeah. how they did the original. Really? Yeah. I had no idea. The original was in the 70s. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes. I don't think sampling was a big thing. Well, like they, in, um, the more you know. Money, yeah. they, they just got all the out. tape machines. That's true. And, so You're I thought right. there was like other stuff going on. Yeah, in there. no, those are all tuned. I, you can look it up. There is like, I think he has to run six or seven of them to get Jeez. all the notes, and he knows exactly which ones to play when. That's crazy. Isn't that cool? And it's bathed in reverb. Yeah. Right. So you get that really cool poof, 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 and it just it sits so well in that, mm. right? And then of course Bill Bruford. Um, that's uh, really if you've ever heard Earthworks' his band, it's. Pretty experimental stuff, man. It's pretty, as Johnny Carson would say, pretty wild and wacky. Um, <laughs> it's out there. Um, See, and, but Dave, that's from the 70s. Yeah, that's from the 60s, basically. <laughs> from the 60s. But yeah, like, the, with the Rototoms, you get that really, there's just this really clean sort of punch in yeah. the Rototoms. And one of the cool things about them, too, is they can be set super low, so you have everything really close, right? So nice. following that, you, you can't not talk about Rototoms and not talk about Terry Bosio. Mm. So... He was a pioneer in all kinds of drum set innovation stuff. And of course, today, he has all those little uh, ratatoms. Yeah. And they're all pitched uh, incrementally, very chromatically. Yeah. That's all 
stuff he absorbed from doing this with, with Rototoms back in the day. Uh, but he's famously known for using them with the band Missing Persons, which was the pop band he played with in the 80s with his, at the time, wife, Dale Bosio. Check out this clip where he's explaining uh, using Rototoms and what he thought of electronic uh, drums at the time. Hmm. Zappa was the one who told me I should try Rototoms, and I couldn't figure out a way to mount them. But then by the time I heard Bill Bruford playing on Rototoms uh, after the first UK album, that, that's when I decided, okay, I'm going to do this too. So I did, and um, it held me through, yeah, the first couple years of Missing Persons. Then I kind of went electronic and got in that whole stupid fad. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, yeah, Stupid fad. I love that oh, clip. Oh, isn't that great? Yeah. Were Rototoms a stupid fad? <laughs> Apparently not, because they're so. back. <laughs> I, I think they were probably seen that way initially, but you, you, we'll see as we go through here. We're going to get into the 80s next. Mm. Um, All right. They became more of a fashion statement, I think, than anything else. But before we do that, I've got two images to share here. Uh, so as success came of these, drum companies, of course, are like, how do we get in on this situation? <laughs> so... Some of you out there in YouTube or in the members area, if you've ever heard of Pearl Very Pitch Drums, have you guys ever yeah. seen Pearl yeah. Very Pitch yeah. Drums? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So these are, are they a love child or an abomination? I don't know, it could be one or the other. But Pearl basically took this idea and shoved it into a drum? Shoved it into a shell? So let's show that image of the Pearl Very Pitch here. Oh. Isn't that a looker? Oh, <laughs> it's like it, they're not finished it yet. It's almost like they're almost on that kit. Like a little kid drew it. Well, I, I mean, I guess there's a couple of victories here. There's no lug, so it's huh? lugless. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. snare drum would be interesting. And as time went on with these, Pearl did not want to admit defeat. So these came out in '79. Anybody know who invented these? Uh, no clue. No. Somebody who has designed many, many very, very famous drum parts, actually. Percaro. No. Randall May. Oh, May did it. Okay. Yeah. So Randall May designed these. Does he want his name attached to them? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, Pearl doubled down, though, after this came out, and they started making a version with bottom heads on the toms as well. Yeah. Peter Chris famously did play them for about 12 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few other, like, very rare photographs of a few other guys sort of like, I still play these drums. These are cool. Yeah. Anybody here ever played a Fritchie snare drum? No, no never. throw that on screen yeah, again. Yeah, so this snare it. drum, check this out. Fridgy? Fritchie. Uh, fr Fritchie, pardon me. So you got the basket on the bottom, so that works very much like these do. And you can play the snare and turn it as you're playing it, hmm. and it adjusts the, the tension. So it's basically taking hmm. a rototom and adding a shell to it. Where are the wires sitting, though? They're on the bottom head, which you can't see in the image, but okay. they're there. Kind of looks like you could cook a pot of soup. Yeah, right. the shell is yeah. conical, too. <laughs> you may notice the, that. Notice that. The, show. the shell does... <laughs> it looks like a pressure cooker. It yeah. toes in a little bit. Yeah. If you were a, a racing car driver, that'd be a perfect camber for your inside wheels. Okay. Yeah, but nice. um, yeah, they still make those. You can buy them. They're about 600 bucks. Uh, really? I played a couple of them. Eh, they're pretty cool. I mean, the, the downside with that drum is that it's... You can see it's like that's a five inch drum, but the drum's about that big. Yeah. yeah. Right with the with the bottom hoop there. You you gotta have the stand set pretty low. And it does bounce a little. Because hmm. it's sitting on that sort of mechanism, right? Oh, so, okay. All right, let's come back from that. Thank you, John, for that. Hmm. I was uh mentioning the eighties. Okay. So Dave, do you remember the eighties? Mm, yes, very, bit, very clearly. Bit. You don't. I know that. Definitely don't Tyson remember the 80s. A little bit. I remember quite a bit of the 80s. I was there for Tyson almost was all of it. partying pretty hard for the 80s, though. Oh, so. My nine-year-old self. Lots of cupcakes and <laughs> gummy bears. Uh, so I picked two very classic drummers that played Rototom to the 80s. Um, one, of course, Alex Van Halen. Yeah. Yeah, in the jump yeah, video, okay. which you're going to see a clip of in a second. He actually played a version of those very pitches on the... What's the tour with the big white kit with the extinguishers on it? Uh, Is that fair warning? Yeah. I think that's the, right. The all, There's a I version with, a with very pitched toms. Crazy. So that must have been where he got the idea from and then said, get rid of the shells. Let's do this. Yeah. The other drummer, you guys know who John Ferris is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Dave, who's John Ferris? He's a drummer, of course. Oh, I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> said that right? Is that right? Excess? Who do you play? See, in excess. The young fella here got yeah. it. Yeah, and you know where yeah, I know the go. name is? Uh, yeah, Todd's are from the spotlight. <laughs> yeah, it's from the 80s. Roll the clip, guys. Let's <laughs> get Dave out of that. Let's see the clip. <laughs>
Okay. I love nice. the double stack. Yeah. I know. Alex has all of these just like here. It's yeah. like, yeah. Brruh, brruh. <laughs> and I got to say, if you listen to 1984, I kind of thought they were a gimmick. I'm going to say dollars to donuts. He's using those toms. He must be. Because it sure sounds like it. Those Some of those fills, like Love Comes Down and stuff. Yeah. Gung, 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 gung. They're so well pitched. They're way brighter than you'd get out of a normal tom. So I think he actually embraced them and actually used them. Mm. Um, and, of course, John Ferris. Can I say just for a second, he's a criminally underrated drummer. Mm. But he wasn't in our Drummers Everyone Should Know. Because there's he? so many. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a part next three. Next episode. We'll yeah, have to do a part episode. three for sure. So clearly you have no examples from the 90s because after the 80s, Rototoms kind of went the way of the dinosaur. They, they seem to have kind of evaporated from that yeah. era. But I'm glad you mentioned that because you just segued perfectly into the next clip. All right. Yeah. Now we're at today. So I've got three examples of modern drummers. I shouldn't use those words together. But drummers from today. Okay. That's better. That's still clunky. But these are three examples of drummers that uh, we all know and love that are using them. One of them has passed recently, unfortunately. But uh, you get the idea and get the point here that we're seeing a resurgence of where these are being used. Two of them are using them as kind of augmentations to their kits. And the third example, well, you'll see. Check it out. Slang always looks perfect. Yeah. Like just that overhead yeah. shot, you're like, <laughs> is that just the same thing like over and over again? Is it looping? It's a machine. It's amazing. Yeah. So of course we had their um the late great Taylor Hawkins, we had Danny Carey, yeah, and we had Thomas Lang. And it's amazing. You can hear in each of those clips, especially the first two, where he's got they both have normal drums yeah. and a rototom. It sticks out. You can really hear when he hits that rototom. Yeah. It has this clear, sort of clean tone. Almost like a bell tone like, from Goom! a drum. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's really interesting. And we're seeing more and more of them, and I, I love it. And I just want to see more of it. You guys know how much I love single headed things. Concert toms, and now we have these. I don't even They're like back. the shells. Don't need the shells. That's such a weird thing to know about you. You know, Kyle Rupp's guy is the guy who only likes single heads on things. Yeah, yeah. My snare drum, I run only oh, one. That's Kyle. Single head. <laughs> <laughs> so many jokes. Thank you for leaving those alone. Nice. Uh, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about this kit. Brandon's going to play it for us in a second. So what we see here is a set of toms. We've got 6, 8, 10, 12 and then the snare is 14 to 16 over there and then we flipped over the 18 to make a bass drum right. the other big difference in this kit you'll see in the in a lot of the videos there's those black rails or aluminum looking rails that the drums are attached to normally they're on like those rails mm. and that's how you adjust the tension against them mm -hmm. uh the person we got this kit from created this kind of modified version of how to do it and it's actually genius so yeah. they're running on rims mounts to mount the toms like you'd mount a regular tom tom but Smart. then you can adjust the pitch with the that's actually the tightener that would go on the rail, but you can use that as like a hand crank. Like mm -hmm. the hand crank. So you can totally adjust that. You want to tune that eight inch top yeah. for us? Uh, this one? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it's less accessible. Sure. For sure, while you're playing, but it's kind of nice that you can just mount these on anything. Yeah. yeah. And it does yeah. give them a even a little bit more sustain. One of the downsides of these poor things, because there's no shells, is that it's head or nothing, right? It's so yeah. dry. Dave yeah. had something to say. I want to hear them. Okay, fine. We're going to hear them. All right, so it's time. John, I sure hope you're ready for this, because I'm giving you at least six seconds of preface here, because it's time for the challenge. Ooh. Yeah! All right. Nice. Well, so, Brandon, today's challenge is twofold. Tell me, Kyle. First up, I want you just to explore this instrument and see what it sounds like. Dave may or may not uh, 
actuate uh, one of those toms. I may help you with the six a little bit, <laughs> nice. just because we can. But uh, let's start with just play around with it. See cool. what you think of it. This is your first time playing a all roto tom kit. Yeah. I, uh, so, other than a few seconds before sitting down. So we're gonna we're gonna do that first, and then you're gonna play to some classic songs. Oh, nice. And you have the option to change the tuning if you want to. Great. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, okay, so a lot of folks fair. in the chat are like, wait, they make a snare drum, Rototom? No, I don't they, think they don't. Do. This is Tyson's uh, abomination. Can we, <laughs> can we show the overhead shot? Or actually, you can show them. It's it's just a Rototom. That's a cool shot, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we just have a set of the LP uh, magnetic wires on the drum, which is designed to go on anything that um, has a rim on it, basically. Yeah, yeah. So we just put those on, and the, the drum's tuned up relatively high. Sounds pretty good, though. Like... Like it fat though. If you tune it down, same thing. Hand crank it. From the oh, I don't want to break it. Oh, you, you won't. won't. <laughs> it's like a snom. It's a snom. Yeah, and someone in the chat uh, says that. Uh, they, they feel the higher pitch they're tuned, the better they sound. They do tend to sound good in that higher range for sure. And they do tend to favor two ply heads. That's why we've got pinstripes on it today. That's sort of the classic setup. Yeah. Uh, the bass drum, the trick with the bass drum is with a bass drum, you gotta have a bit of shell mass to get that sound. So it is kind of flat sounding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, no pun intended because it's a flat drum. But uh, it does work. And we, we worked on kind of finding that sweet spot. You'll notice, I don't know if you can see it in the shot here, but uh, we have a very scientifically placed pillow in between the frames. It's actually an airline, it's an airline neck pillow. Oh, is that is what, what it is? Oh, really? yeah. oh. Yeah, that's just full it, of beads and it fit in there nice. So that floor tom will be well rested no matter where it goes? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it sounds pretty good actually. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I found the, 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 if you don't lay into it, it sounds really good. Yeah. So it starts to, to bottom out eventually because yeah. it doesn't have any support beyond the drum heads. But uh, mm. yeah, as someone in the chat mentioned, one of my favorite other uh, Rototom moments that I didn't mention because uh, I don't know who did it was the intro to Miami Vice, the TV mm, show. Of course. Go, 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 go. Yeah. And I, I, it's probably Rototoms. It could be electronic drums too, or it might just be taking this and doing stuff to it, like yeah. with some EQ and some compression maybe, yeah. but because uh, nice. they, they sound really cool. All right, that's was challenge one. You've certainly, you killed it. I explored the kit. So now <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go further. So now we've got three tracks prepared for you. Um, these are the idea was these wouldn't be a surprise for you, so you know what they are. I know what the first one. You is. do. It's it's a Chili Pepper song. So my question to you is before you play it is, <laughs> you can now go ahead and adjust the tuning if you want to before you play it. What's the uh, what's so the first? So it's uh, can't stop. Oh boy. So think about that for a second. Let's bring this up a little bit. Oh, 
By the way, the pun game is strong in this episode. This, this, is, this is great. <laughs> Frodo Toms. Only hobbits play Frodo, Frodo Toms. Toms. <laughs> Try that. Yeah. Oh, and someone was asking about how we're miking it. It is mic'd. You, there you go. Now you can see the microphones. We do have two um, AKG 414s picking up the kit from here. Uh, they do tend to sound better uh, with them letting the sound develop just a little bit. And then there's, of course, the big old uh, lot and kick drum mic. And then we do have a snare mic as well. John, are you running? Oh, and hi-hat mic. John, you know, are you running overheads too? Yep. Yes. Yes, there you Only go. Only the best for a roto <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Should we try it? Yeah, let's All right, do so it. let's try it. So this is uh, about a minute of uh, your second favorite Chili Pepper song. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Share some of the feedback, <laughs> please. Uh, Do like the weirdest thing. Gareth Collins says, "Erg." <laughs> uh, Nilesh S says, "Terrible." Nice. <laughs> and Chad Smith has left the chat. <laughs> oh. yeah, Chad would dig it. The, the, yeah, I think he would. The the common consensus is they feel that you tune, that we we should have tuned the snare up. Oh well, lucky for all of you out there, we're gonna do just that. <laughs> <laughs> because these are rotted songs. <laughs> Everyone's saying that, or a lot, not everyone, but a lot of people are saying that snare can go in the bin. Um, <laughs> is it better <laughs> or worse than the St. Anger snare? I'd, I'd play this every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd play this too. <laughs> it does feel pretty weak. Still though. better than St. Anger snare. It's, it's just hard to get that garbage can between your knees, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's hard to set and, up. And, and you chose a song with literally, I don't think there's any Tom. Are there Toms in that song? I don't think so. No, that's because the next song is all Toms. Oh. Uh, right. Ready for the next challenge? Yeah, what's the. Okay, next so the next one, it's a song. It's famous. It's known as, it's called Wipeout. Oh. Wipeout. So you can choose, I, I mean, if you want to change the tuning, or maybe you just want to explore the tuning. Yeah, I don't know. you know what? Let's, let's explore. Let it roll? Yeah. Let it okay. roll. Let's so roll. Uh, this is, I, I think this is a perfect drum set to probably play Wipeout on. So let's find out. Here we go. And Dave, this is from the 60s.
need I need a pay raise. I'm I was just going to say, that's a two-person job. That's a two-person yeah. job. You're half the work. Yeah, that's that was pretty great. cool, though. <laughs> I, I, I play like it I'd, up high. I play this song. That, that sounds that great sounds on great. Rototom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And they're still, they're still rifling on the snare drum. Man. I mean, how can you not love? Okay. <laughs> Did we did we reach snare drum nirvana when we turned an entire drum kit into snares and now everyone's spoiled with it? Yeah, we're spoled. Yeah, yeah. Oh. you can turn toms into snares, but you can't turn snares into toms. You dare turn snares? You know, Wait, is that right? I think I think you know. Everybody's got to be a critic with snare drum sounds, right? I don't hate it. I really don't. I don't know what that says about me, but mm. probably doesn't sound any worse than a lot of the boxy uh, no fifties snares. Totally. You know that was in the. That song? Yeah. My voice is getting higher because I'm getting antsy you're about getting, it. You're, yeah. getting, you're getting excited. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now the next one. This is the this is the finale. So I wanted to find something that I thought was quite melodic, and you mm. could kind of improvise a little bit more because that's an expected part, like yeah. that, right? So, so we chose a Sonny Rollins tune, mm. uh, and uh, which is well known for playing the melody on the drums, if yeah. you want to. It's called St. Thomas. It's no surprise. So, uh, but we'll see how this goes. This is a tricky one to play to with no yeah. drums. So, uh, uh, but let's see. Do you want to change any tuning on this? I might mess around with this one because I can change it. Yeah. We'll try some things. Let's see what happens. All right, so this is Rototoms. I'm sure Sonny Rollins, if he heard this, he's like, the next record's all Rototoms. Rolling in his grave. Yes. Sonny Rollins. There's got to be a Rototom joke in there somewhere. Somewhere. Anybody in the chat can come with a good Sonny Rollins Rototom joke. Let's do it. All right, here's St. Thomas. <laughs> smile on your face, it's good. <laughs> you know, that's what the drone department's about. It's doing right. this stupid stuff like this. That's great. Yeah, no one uh, wants to hear, but when they do, they're like, that's awesome. Yeah. I don't know, man. You know? Like, if you were going to do your jury and play that, they'd oh, be yeah. like, let's, actually, it's pretty cool. Let's go. That totally works, man. Like, yeah. So this everything. does bring back the question. So you can tune them on the fly, but you can't tune them while you're playing. <laughs> but you might want to, right? Yeah. So then we look at the, there's, there's a few out there, they're very rare, of floor toms that have pedal control. Yeah. These oh. need pedal control. If he had pedal control, right. there's no stopping you. It's like those um, uh, Miyazzi Tronic drums. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of people keep saying buzz roll. They want to see like a buzz roll on one of these. Oh, sure. On the snare. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> on the beautiful. Yeah, everyone's favorite. <laughs> everyone's favorite. So snare. when you get the straight, you hate how it sounds. You want to hear more of it. Let's hear buzz roll. More. Let's do it. Just like a, just a child. Come on, Dave. Uh oh, I stripped it. I have stripped the roto top. Oh, yeah. oh, Dave. That's why we you can't know, have nice things. It's like that old joke. A gentleman is someone who knows how to play the roto toms, but doesn't. Okay. Before we get off, get away from all of this, John, I, I'm going to throw a little curveball at you here, and if you can't do it, just say no. But if you can do it, you have to say yes. Mm. Uh, one of the things that always helps a thin snare sound is a nice, big, fat reverb. Oh. Like a yeah. nice, big, cavernous reverb. John, can you help us with that? Mm. Uh, that's a thumbs up. All right. So uh, we, can, we can chat about this a little bit more. And when you're ready, let us know, John. So I, I don't know, man. Like, would you, would you have Roto Thompson in your kit now? 
Uh, I, I mean, I love concertons. Okay. So I feel like, why not? Mm -hmm. You know? They do fit easily on a kit because they're so shallow. Yeah. And I, I don't know, man. I think the thing I find is they sound best tuned high, except when you got that one kind of deep, it sounded great. What are you laughing about over there? <laughs> the chat is really good. <laughs> the chat is really good. I'm sorry. I think I broke this one, though. Like, like, Back to Dave's normal pay. Uh, <laughs> I know what you did. Do you know what I did? Yeah, I know what you did. We don't, we, have the drum tech we don't on. need to fix it. We don't need to fix it now. This is good. But, uh, on video for you, Dave. Yeah. Oh, see, and Michael's got his eye on the prize. Michael Minchin says, "Did they do a giveaway? Keeping his eye on the prize. Eye on the prize. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might give something away later on. We'll see how it goes. Someone says they'd rather play on pots and pans. Maybe we should do a pots and pans episode. We can compare them. <laughs> well, you know, when I first came in here, and you remember these, Kyle, I thought it was a traps drum kit. You remember those? Yeah, like, sure. Mm -hmm. With like the flat, like single head. I'm like, oh, okay, because of the bass drum. Yeah. That's the only other bass drum. It does like look that. like a yeah. flat. It looks like drum, a flat. Yeah. You know. Yeah. If we did pots and pans, we'd have to do some research on what what are the best alloys. <laughs> you got to ask Tommy Igo. Do we? Do we, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd have the cast iron kit. Then yeah. you'd have the Dutch oven should kit. We, should... <laughs> You have a bunch of all these. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why is that funny? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the Dutch oven drum kit. Uh, so many things. Are we going to put some verb on this? The thing is, you can do like, like, like you can do the research, make call Zildjian. What alloy would you make a frying pan out of? <laughs> Bing! Zildjian lifestyle. How are we doing, John? We got some, uh, some, ba okay, we're good to go. So let's see, this is adding some lush reverb to make this thing sound like a million bucks. Okay. Let's see. Getting beautiful, we're getting yeah, that's okay, that's better. I can't hear it in the yeah, ears, we, so we, we don't have the good. advantage of hearing it. So, McBuddy Taras says Roto Toms are the mullets of the percussion world. <laughs> <laughs> Can we give him a prize? Yeah, I think he's gonna win a prize. That's the best. What was his name? M uh, Mick, McBuddy Taras. McBuddy Taras. McBuddy Taras. <laughs> Email me at krad at <laughs> I'm gonna give you a, give you one of the things that we're gonna demo in a second here, because so. it's so it's so true. That's okay, pretty funny. Before the we... mullets. Wait, wait. What's wrong with mullets? I mean, how often do you see mullets in the wild these days? It's, it's yeah. very, very, very rare. And like they're you... also coming back though. Well, let's do a poll. I wonder if we can do a poll on on, on YouTube. <laughs> do you think Roto Toms are making a resurgence? Mm. Do you think they? Do you think so? I'm forcing the issue. I'm saying yes. You're saying yes? Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> also, Tyson, uh, you think so? I think so. Yeah. Why? Is it just because we're bored of the other drums? That's just what he thinks. He's because, not, no, no, because more. every 20 years, everything comes back oh. around. And okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, even with concert toms, like, I think I saw in a yeah. Pearl catalog recently, they're making just a normal standard line, but you can buy the concert tom add ons. That is true. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's yeah. where we are at. Coming back. That's, that's true. That's a lot of people true. in the chat are saying the same thing. Yes, yes. A couple no's, okay. I mean, you scrounged the internet and found three clips. <laughs> Dmax says mullets are already back. Agreed. Yeah, mullets it's already yeah. back. Yeah, I guess yeah. they are. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll 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 have to see. You seen baseball much, Dave? There's a lot of mullets out there. No, I don't like baseball. Yeah. Um, NASCAR, but they never left NASCAR. Yeah. Sorry yeah. if you love NASCAR. <laughs> Brandon, are you yeah. rushing out to buy a set of Roto Toms for your kit as an augmentation? Uh, if I didn't have any concert toms, I think I would. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What about you, Kyle? Is this going to make your way? I would love to have a couple on my drum kit. Yeah, I totally would. Tyson, uh, be honest. Come yeah. on, Tyson. Probably not. Thanks. I like this. You, you want to know why? For the honesty, you want to know why though? I'm not going. No, to I don't one? care because there's a full set of them down in the warehouse. <laughs> oh, that's not a good answer, <laughs> yeah, Dave. Yeah, How about yeah. you? Well, you know, when I was in my dream theater phase, Mike Portner and I always used to use octobonds. Yeah. So I always wanted octobonds because they look so cool, they right? Do. Um, I don't know. I, I would put one on for like a jam band if I was like maybe in a creative writing space and I wanted to try something different, but I couldn't see an application on the stuff that I play that I would put one of these on my kit. All right. So, All right. Yeah. Hard crowd. Yeah. I, I got to be the devil's advocate here. I got to speak for the drummers out there who don't have. I would also like to point out that Dave, however, has been playing more bass than drums lately. 
Yeah. There could be some other factors at play here. Maybe maybe it's because there's no roto base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there is kind of. You just have yeah, to go. There do, 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 yeah, there do, 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 do. That was the worst analogy because there are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're going to move right along. That was great. Thanks, dude. Yeah, that was man. killer. Uh, let's talk about some crazy drumming. It's time for Groove of the Week. This week's Groove of the Week is brought to you by at Nikki Bags, two Zs, two Zs, at Nikki mm. Bags. Z, z, z. Uh, check this out. This guy is unreal. I love Dude. Man, and I love the guitar player just holding on for dear life. Yeah. <laughs> I almost felt bad for them. <laughs> that was incredible. He's great. Ricky, uh, Nikki, Nikki Bags. Bags. Nikki Bags. Yeah. With two Zs. At Nikki Bags. Go follow. Go check him out yeah. on the Instagrams. There's a whole bunch of other really cool clips. He's, uh, there's one of him doing, he's got two or three of them playing uh, Michael Jackson's jam. Mm. And he just goes, he chop much? Oh, yes. Yes. He has all the chops, which is, you know, it, it, it's, it's not all about the chops, but my goodness. You want to celebrate the work, the effort, the energy, and the musicality when someone puts it into. Mm. And I love the fact, the reason I showed that clip is because he says, I laughed out loud during my my, my solo. Because he does. Yeah. At the end, he just goes, ha, 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 ha. He's an open break and just laughs, right? Yeah. It's like, that's what it's all about. Just, he was in the moment, and he's like, you know what? That's awesome. <laughs> I'm just going to end with that. <laughs> so good. Brilliant. So check out Nikki Bags. All right. It's time to showcase what's in the box. What's in the box? <laughs> Didn't even wait for me to throw to it. I love it. Tyson, you want one? Yeah. Oh, oh wow. wow. That was close. Was pretty close. Oh, Brandon, we'll give you one. Dave doesn't get one. That's fine. We're going to give one away to uh, McDubbs or whatever his <laughs> name was. <laughs> something, <laughs> something, something to ass. Yeah. Mick, Mick something to ass. Buddy to ass. Yeah, yeah. Buddy to ass. So, what's in the box, you ask? Well, what's inside this box? It's a product called Drummer's Grip, which, you know, this could be a lot of things, I suppose. Get a but grip. It is a very simple looking little thing. It almost looks like a tiny shoe polish thing. Like mm -hmm. an air filter yeah. for a lawnmower. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Yeah. There you go. So this little uh, gadget here was designed by, you're going to remember his name. What's Grayson's dad's name? Jeff? Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, Jeff is correct, yeah. Jeff, Jeff. Necrutman designed this. Grayson Necrutman's father. Because he saw Grayson struggling with tightening and loosening his cymbal stands. Not because Grayson's a weakling, by, by no means. But these darn things, every now and then, they get stuck. Yeah. You know, and you need to do the old, Brandon, can you show us, or can you pass me uh, your sticks for a sec? Yes. So there's two ways to fix a stuck wing bolt on a drum set. Well, there's a few ways. One would be a hammer, I suppose, but <laughs> drummers usually take a pair of drumsticks and we make a wrench <laughs> to tighten and loosen, right? We've all done that, yeah? Yeah. Oh, but yeah. It's, it's, it doesn't always work. Oh, no. Sometimes you, slip you pinch off. your finger. Oh. Mm -hmm. in there. So Jeff invented this thing, the... <laughs> drummer's grip. I was like, grip. I have it. It's not. You said get a grip, and it's stuck in my head. Yeah, yeah. Now. Maybe you should call it that. Uh, so it's real simple. It's made out of uh, plastic. I think it's PVC actually. There you can see that image. Hang on one sec. Oh, look at that. There it is. Oh, right there. So that's designed to go over basically any part of your stand. You can tighten or loosen. This gives you a better grip on it. And Tyson, you've been traveling and touring Canada with one of our uh, favorite drummers, and. You said you've been traveling with Every this. time I set up Flavio's drums, when sound check's done and everything's in place and we're dialed, I go around the kit and just bump all the wing nuts mm. just to make sure nothing's going to pop loose while we're playing. I love it. It's awesome. Uh, you've been using this? This, exact, this one. I've been using a drummer script. Fits your, fit, fits your bag really well. <laughs> <laughs> it fits in your stick bag really easily because it's nice and yeah. compact. Yeah. But it's also, it fits, it fits in your hand great too. And it, it, you don't get like an insane amount of leverage. That's it. And you don't want that. Like You, you don't want to strip out a wing nut. You no. just want to make it tight 
a little tighter than normal, and but not you, stripped. Yeah, and if you have, like the Yamaha stuff is not chrome plated, but if you have chrome plated hardware, the other thing too is when you get a real good grip on stuff or real bite on it, the chrome can flake off. And I don't yeah. know about you, but I've had chrome slivers. Everybody here got chrome I have slivers. had chrome oh, slivers yeah. many times. <laughs> not fun. So this yeah. is that extra degree of separation from that. So yeah. you can buy these at your local drum shop. You can even buy them on Grayson's website. Yep. Um, they're 20 bucks. Yeah. It's Great a small tool. price to pay for something that, tool. that you would, even if you use it once, it'll come in handy that yeah. one time. You know, it's like, yeah, sure, you can use pliers, you can use sticks, right? But I mean, 20 bucks. I cannot count the number of times I've gotten to a backline or festival drum kit and someone has virtually welded the drum that, throne in yeah. place. And that's why I keep one with me because I'm always on backline drums and yes. yes. Let's give two of these away to our members because we're going to give one away to Dada Dada Taras. <laughs> Make buddy yes. Taras. We're going to give away two of these to someone in the members area. Give one, we'll give two away. So uh, I like uh, Francis Belland. Francis Belland, you're going to win one of these. Nice. Francis, email me at krad at drumio.com. I'm selecting at random. Actually, Dave, you want to pick one in yeah. the members area? Yeah. Uh, how about I give you a number? Yeah, sure. I'm going to give you seven. <laughs> That's like seven <laughs> points. I was going to do 7.5. I'm like, no, yeah. that doesn't make any sense. Wait a second. <laughs> yeah. Seven it is. Uh, rock and roll 68. You are also going to win one of these really cool little drummer grips. And I love it even says on it, do not over tighten. It says so on the on the thing. Right? That's kind of got this cool graphic. It's like a 20s style yeah. ye olde graphic on there. It's pretty I cool. Yeah. It. I would definitely have one of these in my stick bag. Definitely, definitely. Nice. All right. Everyone's saying we should also give away the 18-inch Roto, Tom. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah. Not doing that. No. Not doing that. Six, eight, ten. You can find those. They're around. The but 18 is, it's true. To find the 14, difficult. 16, 18, even the 12 is yeah. a little bit rare, but the 14, 16, 18 in the Roto Toms, those are rare drums. They're hard to get your hands on them. Yep. Yeah. All right. We're at that point in the show. We're almost done. Let's give away a one-year membership to someone out there in YouTube. So, uh, if you win this, lucky you, you get a full year of Drumeo. If you're not sure what's behind all of this and what we do, aside from this silly show, we do all kinds of things. We have 5,000 songs, we have lessons from the world's best drummers, all kinds of great content for you. If you want to check out all of that, all you ever need to do is go to drumeo.com slash trial, seven days for free. You can just check out all the stuff we do. Yeah. Nice. There Pretty cool, right? But, Dave, who are we going to give this away to in YouTube? Well, I'm thinking let's scroll up in the chat. Because as soon as we start mentioning the giveaway, everyone just starts spamming. There's, True. There's like, oh, I saw one person that just said hello and all that. So scroll up to the top and pick the fourth from the top. Okay. Let's do that's that. That's how we're going to do it this wow. time. Good one. Uh, so that's going to go to Crusher74. Congratulations, nice. Crusher74. Crusher Crusher 74, congratulations. Email me at krad at drumeo.com. That's K R A D at drumeo.com. We'll get you set up with a one year membership. Congratulations. Nice. Yeah. Well, guys, this brings us to the end of our Roto Tom Festival. Mm. I just got to say, I think it looks cool. I think it sounds cool. And uh, I'm happy to see they're still around. Yeah. Maybe someone will innovate the Rototom after this. And for those who are watching in YouTube land, once this is not live, leave a comment below. Do you think Rototoms are cool? Mm. That's not really the question. It's, it's are they making a research? <laughs> just answers yes yeah. or no. When but just they, yes when, or no. When are they, they cool? cool again? No, no context. Yes. <laughs> No, <laughs> just like tons of yeses and tons of no's. Let's do it. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, it's time to end this week's episode. Of course, that means it's time to share our Student of the Week. That was seamless, by the way. Mm -hmm. Student of the Week this week is Joe Aruda. Woo. Joe Aruda started playing drums back in 1974. Wow. No joke. Wow. Uh, he had the opportunity to play a friend's drum kit. And he's like, this is cool. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Years have gone by. He studied with three different in-person teachers throughout his life. But uh, he actually got himself a Styx DVD, which then led him down the road to Mr. Todd Sukerman, mm. which then led him down the road to Drumio, which the is where is he history. is now. Nice. So uh, he is our student of the week. We're going to share this clip with you guys to celebrate his work. This is him just laying down a beat. He's got a really cool drum set. He definitely thinks Rototoms are rad. When you see his kit, you know what I'm talking nice. about. Uh, so I want to say thank you to everybody for watching today. We'll be back again next week. If you're in the members area, we're going to come right back and answer all of your questions about these silly things. And everybody else out there, go practice your drums, and we'll see you again soon.